Welcome to the City Current Show, powered by Hagen Botham Insurance and Financial Services. This show focuses on sharing good news and powering the good in our community. Now here's your host, Andrew Bartolotta. Welcome back to the City Current Show, where we bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference and powering the good in our community and around the globe. I'm your host, Andrew Bartolotta, and today we are honored to have Patrick McGuire, the Nashville Chapter Coordinator for Guitars for Vets. Guitars for Vets is on a mission to put the healing power of music in the hands of heroes. Through their free guitar lessons, they help veterans dealing with the challenges of PTSD and other service-related issues by finding solace and connection through music. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Happy to be here. Of course, can you start by telling us a little bit more about the mission of Guitars for Vets and the inspiration behind it? Absolutely. So uh, as you stated, our mission is to put the healing power of music in the hands of heroes. And uh, what we are looking to do there is uh, any individual that has served in the military and experienced some sort of trauma, uh, and they're looking for tools, they're looking for things that will help them kind of grow through what they're struggling with. Um, we have found that music is a great tool for that. And specifically how that came about relative to Guitars for Vets, about 17 or so years ago up in Wisconsin, our founder, Patrick Nettesheim is his name. He's just a a long-haired rock and roller up in Wisconsin doing his thing. And he was a guitar teacher as well. And he had a Vietnam era Marine that was one of his students. And so they were doing their lessons. And this gentleman said to him, you know, this is, uh, in addition to being really fun and I'm enjoying, uh, you know, learning how to play guitar, I'm finding that this is really helping me with my PTSD. So what they did was they took it down to the local VA and said, hey, we have this idea. Let's do a little outreach here, see if we can connect with other veterans, provide guitar lessons and see if this could be, a you know, a, a tool that would benefit those that are suffering with PTSD or other things. And, you know, and some of those other things are like traumatic brain injury, uh, military sexual trauma and lots of other difficult things like that. So, um, and, you know, it's sort of uh, bloomed from there. They turned into a 501c3, and now we have something around 120 chapters throughout the United States. We've given away over 5,000 guitars. Uh, We've given over 50,000 lessons. The program specifically uh, entails 10 one-hour lessons, one, one-on-one instruction uh, with a guitar instructor. During that period of time, we give them a guitar as a loner. They keep, you know, they keep it with them. They take it home. They practice. And then when they finish the 10 lessons, we take the loner guitar back and we give them a brand new guitar that they can keep and do with what they will, uh, along with some accessories like a capo and a stand and a tuner and stuff like that. Uh, so the so the heart of the program is the teaching and then the learning how to play. Of course, you know it's pretty cool to get a free guitar though too. You know, at the end of it, that's that's exciting. And and there's really no downside to it. If a veteran comes to us and says, "Hey, I want to check it out," uh, and they go through the program and they like it, that's a win, obviously, and they continue to play. If they go through the program and they say, "You know what? This has been great. Um, I finished the program. Thank you for the guitar, but I'm not sure if I'm going to play anymore. I think I might give this to my grandson or my granddaughter." That's a win too because they've checked it out. You know, they they sort of checked out this activity. Is this a tool that's going to work for me? And if it's, you know, and now they know, so they can either stick with it and continue on or move on to the next thing. So there's really no downside. And I mentioned that for two reasons. Uh, the the um, Kind of the orientation that we step to the veteran is that uh, our our founder uh, Patrick Nenasam I mentioned him earlier he came up with this really nice acronym called Page get on the same page with the veteran and it stands for patience acceptance gratitude and empathy so that's the the lens by which we view the veterans as they come to us so you know half of it is hey here's guitar here's how to play it and we kind of do that the other half is just creating a you know, a moment and, and a, an experience that just it's it's a good human positive experience that, you know, is is enjoyed by both the, the veteran and the instructor, at least hopefully, you know, that's that's the idea. So uh, and that's a really important part of the program. Absolutely. And I love that you're using the power of music to heal for these veterans. You mentioned that upon 
uh, completion of the program that they receive a graduation guitar along with those other accessories. Share more about what this moment means to the participants. Well, you know, um, as you can well imagine, uh, the individuals that are referred to us uh, and they're referred to us by the VA for the most part uh, via recreational therapy, they're dealing with very difficult issues. And we're guitar players, we're not therapists, so we don't know what the issues are necessarily when they come to us, unless they choose to share and we just listen. Uh, but it, it's very meaningful because if they're struggling uh, with, you know, whatever they're struggling with, this is a, a thing that they can do. It's 10 lessons. It's not like this gigantic, you know, longitudinal goal. It's manageable, it's achievable, and it's and when you achieve it, it's it's a big achievement, you know. And we make a big deal of that we have a graduation, and it's a lot of fun. It's kind of like Christmas morning, you know, and um, it's something to feel good about, you know. So um, that's a really big part of it, and and that's hopefully, you know, will will lay the foundation or add to the foundation that they've already laid to coming back from whatever they're trying to recover from, and uh, whether it be internal scars, external scars, or both. Um, and oftentimes it is both. Yeah, there's there's some really great uh, Nashville. Of course, you're part of such a, a larger organization, which is really cool. And to think that your chapter is in the mecca of country music. One of my questions is, in your experience, what role does the choice of music genre play in the healing process? Do veterans tend to gravitate towards certain types of music? Well, you know, that's a great question because a lot of it is dependent, of course, on how old the veteran is. And we get young veterans, we get older veterans. Uh, country music is oftentimes in the mix, but, you know, we get guys and, and women that are into classic rock, um, you know, blues, jazz, heavy metal, you know, what have you. Uh, and, and by and large, what happens is if you, if you want to learn how to play Metallica or if you want to learn how to play George Jones and you don't know how to play either, you kind of start in the same place, right? It's like, okay, here's <laughs> here's how to hold the guitar. Let's work on some technique. Let's get your fingers moving. Let's learn some chords. And whether you're, you know, going through the heavy metal route or or, or the country music route or whatever, you know, it, it starts with the basics. So, and then, but knowing what uh, the uh, the veteran, you know, sort of has in their mind, like, what would they like to play? And, and that's one of the questions I ask them when I when I first talk to them on the phone, when I'm trying to pair them up with the right structure, I'll, I'll ask, you know, hey, when you see yourself playing the guitar, what does that look like? What does that sound like? And, you know, what what is you about that? And then you can kind of get a picture of, you know, kind of where they want to go, the, the trajectory of the, their musical goals. And so we keep that in mind. Um, but, you know, from the first couple of lessons, you know, it all looks very similar, as you, as you might imagine. You know, fundamentals are fundamentals. So, you know, and then you can branch That's out. good to know. For someone that has always wanted to play guitar, but, um, and has even over the years had an acoustic guitar and a um, an electric guitar, but never really got much past that, being able how to hold it. Uh, it's good to know that whether you want to play Metallica or George Jones, you really start at the same place. So that's good for those that, you know, as the healing process, you don't want them to feel like they don't like like they're going to fail at something like whatever they do, they're going to achieve and music will help in that process. What challenges does Guitars for Vets face in its mission? How could, how can the com community support your efforts? Talk about volunteer opportunities donations, uh, maybe community events. Talk about how we can support you. So um, I appreciate that question. There's uh, that, that can be done. Donations are always wonderful uh, to get. That They don't go to me or the local chapter. They go straight to the central organization, which is up in Wisconsin. It takes about $200, $220 to get a veteran through the program. And most of that cost uh, is, is just getting the guitar that we give them. Um, but we also uh, receive donation, no, donated instruments, um, some of which we'll keep for our loaner pool. Um, for example, I've received a number of guitar donations over the years, and I'm, I think I'm doing this for like about eight years now. I started my eighth year with G4V in Nashville. And there's a chapter, uh, or there's a gentleman, I should say, in Chattanooga that is a uh, executive director of one of the vet centers down there. Long story short, we connected. He'd like to start a chapter out of his vet center. So I hooked him up with some guitars for his loaner pool. So, you know, uh, that's one thing that we do with um, donated guitars. 
if the donor has a specific wish, like I want to give you this guitar, it used to belong to my dad, I want it to go to a veteran, and I, I want that specifically to happen, I will definitely honor that. And when I give it, when I identify the right veteran that's going to get that guitar, because I don't want it living under anybody's bed or in somebody's closet, I, I will, I'll hold that instrument and I'll wait for the right individual to come along and I'll, I'll you know, give that guitar to them, usually as a, as a graduation guitar. I'll snap a picture, I'll send it to the donor, here's, you know, uh, the individual that wound up with your dad's guitar, this is what they're about. And, you know, so I try to you know, close the loop so they can feel good about, you know, what they've done with their donation and, you know, they'll know that we've honored their request. A lot of times people are like, hey, you know, do what you want with this. I'm, I want to donate it. I, I know it's going to benefit the program. How it will benefit the program, I don't really care. So whatever they want, we will honor. Um, and then, of course, instructors. We're always looking for instructors. Nashville is full of, you know, it's a guitar culture. It's a music culture. There's a lot of great, great players. Um, some of the instructors that teach with us here in Nashville have pretty remarkable stories of their own in terms of what they've done in their own musical career. You know. And as the saying goes, if, if if at first you don't succeed, try management, right? So that's a joke I read on a billboard somewhere. But I, I fancy myself as sort of a mediocre guitar player. So it's a very special experience for me because I can do something really significant for another individual with music, you know, that I'm, you know, sort of involved in. And it's very meaningful for me to be able to do that as sort of a quote unquote, you know, mediocre guitar player. Um I mean, I can hang, but, you know, it's all relative. In Nashville, you know, <laughs> there's just, you know, amazing musicians every every stone's throw away. And, you know, 365 degrees, you'll hit an amazing musician. So it, it's it's really meaningful. And I've, I've um, met you know, and had instructors involved in the local chapter that have done really remarkable things in their own musical career and had made the, the statement that of all the things I've done, this is you know, likely the most significant because they're impacting another, you know, individual. It's it's giving back and it's about veterans. So everybody loves that, right? It's just a wonderful, wonderful feel. It's a feel good thing, you know, and it's it's not political. It's just, it's a good thing, you know? So, so yeah. those three areas, whether it be donating, you know, uh, instruments or donating funds or donating time. What puts a smile on your face when you look at the work that you've been doing for uh, would you say almost nine years with guitars for vets? Like what, what drives you to continue to do this work? Well, you know, it, it's, it's the um, being involved and trying to help another person give back and doing it with music. I mean, that for me personally, that really encapsulates what, what is attractive to me. I've always cared about veterans. I'm not a veteran myself. Uh, some of our instructors are, some of them aren't, but I've always, you know, had, a, you know, a, a grateful feeling for our veterans and, and, you know, grateful for the life that we live in, in this country. So, you know, that's sort of like stage one. Stage two is when you teach somebody and they like really take to it like a, like a fish to water. Like, you know, you see this individual is excited and there's aptitude and they, they, they're practicing hard and all these things come together. You know, the one thing that really fascinates me about this process, and when I first started, because I'm not a veteran and I don't suffer from PTSD, it, I, I was a little confused, like, you know, guitar playing or learning any instruments, it's hard, it can be frustrating, it takes a lot of effort and time, and I've, it's my understanding that PTSD can be very difficult, emotional, and frustrations, and, you know, maybe anger, uh, but it's been explained to me by a lot of veterans, the very fact that it requires all of the veteran. It requires it because it's so difficult. It requires all of them. They have to focus. They have to really give their entire sort of being at, when they're learning, when they're practicing. That's sort of the magic sauce. That's what because it's so difficult. It takes them away uh, from some of the troubling thoughts, and it, you know, and replaces that with another activity. You know, and if you look into neuroscience and things like that, I'm not a neuroscientist, but there's a lot of science that says, you know, the brain uh, and, and neuroplasticity and how the brain can rewire itself. If you do things like this that require new skills, new thought processes, new motor skills, et cetera, you really literally lay down new connections in your nervous system. So it's it, it's a really fun thing to watch that unfold. Um, one of the things that I'll, I'll share with people to sort of, you know, with, with students to set an expectation. Uh, because a lot of people have unrealistic expectations. Like they see Eddie Van Halen play the guitar and they think, 
he probably popped out of his mother's belly being able to do that. And he was a gifted guitarist, no doubt. But, he, you know, he put the, you know, thousands and thousands of hours into it. And even before he picked up guitar, a lot of people don't know this, but he was a classical pianist. Uh, both he and his brother were classically trained. And he was like a nine-year-old winning, you know, competitions in Long Beach, California. That's how good he was, you know, before he even touched the guitar. So, and that, you know, that's all in his ears and his brain, right? So, but what I'll say to veterans is when you pick the guitar up and you try to do something, there will be moments where you feel like this feels impossible. It literally feels impossible. And uh, and maybe at that very moment it is, but you keep on practicing, you keep on asking. And what happens is when you put that guitar down or when you you know go to lay down at night to sleep, there's stuff happening underneath the hood. And there's things happening with your nervous system. Those, those new connections that I mentioned, they're being formed. It takes a while to form them. So you keep on doing that with the faith that, yeah, you know, those they're going to form. And then the way that manifests is you pick your guitar up one day and sort of out of the blue, like the lightning bolt, the thing that seemed impossible. Now you can do it. And it's like, wow, that was all I was worried about. That kind of seems easy now. And that's the big payoff. You know, that's like to, to use a golf analogy. You're a mediocre golfer, but you get that one good shot every time you go out. That's the one that keeps you coming back. And, you know, so every guitar player lives for that moment where you're like, I couldn't do that thing before I work really hard. And now I can do it in my sleep. I don't even think about it. That whole process, it's like rinse and repeat. And that's how you get to be a good, you know, good instrumentalist. But that that is wonderful to see. That's sort of like the, the big payoff for me. And that doesn't happen with everybody, or at least it doesn't happen in front of me all the time. It will happen to the individual if they keep at it. But so that's that's really cool. I, I really love when that happens. It's a very that's really uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. see the transformation and to know that for many of those veterans that are facing PTSD and emotional strain, that they can have an outlet for them to feel comfortable, but also to express their creativity and their thoughts inside and mindfulness. So Guitars for Vets is doing incredible work. Lastly, where can people go to learn more to support your efforts, find a chapter near them and or support Guitar for Vets in Nashville? So um, thank you for that. What you just said was really nice and very concise and accurate and it was wonderful, way better than I could have said it. So that was awesome. <laughs> so, um, but where they can learn more, they can go to the website. It's www.guitarsforvets.org and you can spell out F-O-R for the, letter, for the word for, or you can use the number four. We have both domains. So www.guitarsforvets.org or you can call the phone number and that's, um, let me find that for you. It's 855-G4V-HERO. So 855-G4V-HERO. Um, on the website, there's lots of information. You can find the chapter relative to what state you live in. Um, you can look and see who endorses uh, guitar for Vets. There's a lot of artists that we call ambassadors that they've sort of gotten behind what we do. They like what we do and they sort of tell people about it. That's how I learned about it. There's a individual that actually, I think he has a home here in, in Nashville, but he has several homes around the world. One of the greatest guitar players ever, in my opinion, Tommy Emanuel is his name. And I go to see him whenever I can. I've seen him a number of times and he would talk about this from the stage as, as a G4B ambassador. So I, I was at one of his concerts and went, you know, walked by the merch table and there was a guy there at the end of the merch table with a couple of brochures on G4B. So I chatted him up and that's how I got involved, you know? So I was just one that was sort of enthusiastic about the whole thing. And, um, you know, so that's that, that's how people can learn more about it. And if they want to get involved, certainly reach out to, you know, the, the home office via the website or call one of the instructors or email instructors that are listed, the, the chapter coordinators, that is, that are listed in the find a chapter section of the website. That's where you can find me under the Nashville chapter. So, which I think is the best chapter. Just kidding. <laughs> Of course. Well, I mean, you're right in Music City, so it makes total sense that the work that you are doing, you're surrounded by people that can help volunteer, share their expertise. Patrick, thank you for the work that you're doing to impact lives of veterans facing PTSD and other um, behavioral health issues that may uh, affect them, but using the power of music and guitars in particular to inspire their creativity and their health. Thank you for coming on the show and powering the good in our community. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it.